Hello everyone and welcome to another video of mine. Today we're going to be talking about gliders in Microsoft Flight Sim. Now quick disclaimer, I am not a full glider pilot. I have had some real life experience quite a few years ago now. Uh, unfortunately, I did stop due to health reasons, but I have had uh, a good few hours in a glider IRL. Um, when the update came out from uh, Microsoft a while ago for the glider, it was it was amazing and they have come so far and it is one of the best experiences in my opinion in Microsoft Flight Sim especially if you have uh, virtual reality VR uh, but so today we go on stream sometimes to do some glider flights and I do get a comment quite a few times of basically Moto can you make a video uh, so we know what to look out for what to expect and what to kind of do so that's basically this video. I'm just gonna go over some basics for the gliders, um, what to do, what not to do kind of thing, what the instruments mean, uh, because you've all heard the beeps uh, before, I'm sure if you've flown gliders, uh, some of you are unsure what that actually means. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today and hopefully you'll learn something from it. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoy. So a great way to start off learning with the gliders in Microsoft Flight Sim is actually under flight training come down and go to the glider training work your way through this it will teach you a lot of the basics too and just get you started so i'll be using the discus mod from got friends glider it is very very good uh there are default gliders in the sim now uh but the the discus one there is a payware and a freeware version i'm rocking with the uh payware version um but the freeware is very also very good um you can also connect to friends on the multiplayer server uh, and have them tow you up if you really want to so i'm just going to go over some basic stuff here today so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to close the canopy here here we go let's bring that down the battery's already on and what we're going to do is we're going to go over some basics so obviously you've got the fly stick in front of you um i tend to hide that while flying uh, which you can do by just clicking at the bottom here you can see down here we've got a basic map and if you click on the plane icon you can as you can see multiplayer connection click to connect uh you can do a winch launch now what a winch launch is if you're unsure uh as you can tell we're connected up to a uh powered plane in front of us that will tell us up but what winch launch does is it's a uh a, basically a winch so uh, what we had uh when i when i flew is it was attached to a tractor and there's a cable that comes from the tractor all the way to underneath the aircraft, uh, which I can probably show on the discus. It's at the front here. And the one I flew, it was connected to just underneath. And what that does is it quite literally yanks you into the air. Um, it is a very surreal experience, incredibly fun, adrenaline rush, etc., etc. but it is really good fun. And it effectively yanks you in the air um, the training on Microsoft Flight Sim will give you a winch launch training as well to give you an idea. Very, very high angle of attack going up about 1,200 feet. Uh, you would pull the disconnect bar, which is this yellow lever here. Uh, you, you'll give that a good, uh, good yank and the cable come off and off you go. Uh, but if you do do a winch launch, don't forget after you come off the cable, uh, push down on, uh, push forward on the stick. Get that nose down so you get the airspeed because it it's instant zero G for about half a second. Get the stick forward and then start building up airspeed. Then, uh, but like I said today, we're going to be getting towed up. So I'll show you how to do the tow. We can see we've got a headwind right now, 10 knots. It's quite windy in the UK today we're using live weather, but the weather I'll go over in a second. Uh, you've got your basic uh, speed here. Uh, now, this is in kilometers an hour. Now, I do believe if you press one of these outer buttons. Oh, wait, no, they've changed it. So if you go to settings and you can see here you go, metric units, you can click that, go in Imperial, and then you've got knots and then you've got uh, feet instead of meters, etc., etc. Uh, so you can change it through here. Obviously, oxygen is installed, which is just behind us here. And you will need to turn that on if you go above uh, 10,000. Uh, which gliders can do very comfortably by the way now um here's your knots obviously or kilometers depending on how you have it uh here's your altitude indicator uh now here's your varimeter right and this is uh basically your uh, vertical speed now think of it as a vertical speed as you would in any other aircraft right zero means you're level below zero means you're going down above zero means you're going up okay very basics but 
Now, with gliders, um, this is probably, if not the most important instrument in here. Now, I have turned it down. Now, if I turn this up, you'll hear it. Well, it was a second ago uh, before I started to stream uh, the, the recording, but it's now proved me wrong. Now, what that basically does, I'm hoping it'll go off in a second, but what it does is you'll hear tones, beeps, okay? Um, a high-pitched tone means you've got lift. A low-pitched tone, there you go. See how that's a bit of a high pitch? And it went and it came lower. There. Do you hear that? That low pitch means you've lost lift. The higher it goes, just like that, means you've got lift. And it will show you how much lift you've got. And you can see again, it's indicated uh, your vertical speed over here as well. Um, now, when flying gliders, you almost never look at the vertical speed gauge. Uh, well, I don't anyway. I listen for the tones. It's all I ever do. So as you gain in, as you found a thermal, um, You'll, you'll gain the lift, you'll hear the beeps go up, so you know you got it. As long as you keep your speed at a good speed as well. So about, I tend to stay in a thermal about between 80 to 90 knots. Uh, I find that's a really good medium. And you'll just circle, and the circling is quite harsh as well. People think it's a gentle turn around. No, no, you want to be quite aggressive in the turn because you want to stay in that pocket because it will just push you up. And what people don't realize is the wings on a glider are huge. They are very, very long. And they, the, the, the aircraft is, is designed literally to keep you up. Um, so yeah, that's basically what that instrument does. That's how you listen out for it. Uh, we'll show it when we're in the air as well. Um, and the other, one of the most important instruments is this bit of string. Now, as you're flying, you want this string pretty much always straight across now you can turn it off i think yeah you can so you you want it straight across the canopy if it's veering to the left slightly put opposite rudder in and if it's sliding to the right you put the opposite rudder in as well so you always want that string because it will give you the optimal uh airflow across the whole aircraft to give you good lift or to keep you uh stop losing lift if that makes sense because you're causing too much drag you're going against the wind too much so you can lose speed, you can lose altitude. Flying gliders is very much eyes out. And that is why the Verimeter has the tone. Because you don't need to look at it. You've got the tone, you can be eyes out, you're looking straight ahead, you're looking at that piece of string, you, it's going right across the canopy, you're doing good. Um, and yeah, so it's very eyes out. It's very it's very uh, looking out the, the, kind of, uh, the cockpit more than eyes down looking at the instruments uh, kind of flying, which I really like, uh, really, really like. Uh, also, these, air, uh, these aircraft are incredibly maneuverable as well. Um, you can do some insane stunts in these and it will just take it. Um, you can nose down, build up speed, go up to about 100, 120 knots, pull back on the stick and it, it will just flip right over very comfortably. Um, so have fun, honestly, have fun with these things. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about weather real quick because gliders are very dependent on weather. You have no engine. Um, now, by all means, if it's a, a cold day, uh, there's no winds, there's no thermals, nothing, uh, you can take off, uh, but you're gonna come back pretty quickly. You won't be able to really go far from your home base, so to speak. So I've loaded up in East Midlands today and it's the weather the live weather today it is very windy i should have some good lift uh flying into wind it's very warm as well for me um about an hour or two away from east midlands irl it's 27 degrees today so today would be a very good a day to fly a glider but say it's um december and there's like no heat there's no wind but you still want to fly here you could use something called so fly uh, which I have used several times for flying gliders. And it is fantastic. It's a weather, basically a weather preset uh, for Microsoft Flight Sim. And it comes with over 70 different uh, presets covering so many different types of weather. Now, this just doesn't go to gliders. Uh, this could go for anything. If you want to practice some zero visibility Cat 3 landings in, a, in an Airbus or a Boeing or something, you could use it for that. 
into your favorite location, etc. But it's so simple. Now I'm using something called Flow here. So all I do is go to Weather. Uh, I click down here and you can see the absolute insane amount of types of weather. Uh, and I've, like I said, I've used this a few times, flying the gliders and the IRA weather is just not good enough for it today, but I want to go quite far. So I can quite literally go through any of these and you can pick, you've got calm winds, you've got blazing sun, uh, typical spring day, uh, light rain, obviously that's rain and gliders isn't a good day. I love the typical English day as well. Uh, and hot and humid, so there's a great preset. Click, look how fast that's loaded. And it's going to be a hot, humid day in Musfus. Uh, perfect for finding some thermals. And you can see the clouds and everything, and you know where to avoid, uh, where to skim the clouds to the greatest lifts. Um, now, you could just a couple of miles out from this cloud layer here, you could skim that, uh, get some good lifts. Not recommended IRL, probably, but here for Musfus, it's absolutely fine. But look how quick that loaded. And typical English day, click that. There you go, beautiful and rain. Uh, they've got a typical spring day, and just look how quick this loads. Uh, so it is a great tool. I'll put a link down below if you do want to fly gliders or, or just practice landing in different conditions. It is a fantastic, fantastic tool. Okay. So we're back on live weather and you're on the runway, you're ready to go, you're connected to either the tow plane or the winch. So what do we do? We look left, we look right, everything's clear. We're gonna move the rudder pedals, uh, rudder, pe rudder pedals, uh, left, then right, full motion, and you'll see this little dude here who I've called Dave wave his arm. So I'm gonna go full left, full right, and back to center, there we go. We're gonna hold stick. Start moving in a second. Here we go. He's going to run us along. As soon as he lets go, that's it. Now it's up to us. Rider inputs. Stick input. A little bit back. And we're airborne. That's it. We are really getting pushed over with a lot of crosswind here. Now we want to try and keep the tow plane just above the f nose of the glider. Okay, this wind is quite crazy so we're gonna go gear up here it comes and here we go not the prettiest takeoff but we'll learn it as we go right now don't worry too much about the uh the string i'm just keeping the tow plane on the tip of the the glider here above the instruments don't know why he's pointing down Probably trying to build up some speed or something. It is generally quite windy um, in the UK today. So a winch launch would have probably been a bit better, but it's all good. We got it now. And what will happen is he will take us up and he will turn left and then or right. But he'll circle the area. And what we're looking out for here is he'll wave his wings basically he'll go left and right left and right and that is an indication to basically pull the yellow lever to come off so he's going to come left so if you've ever flown dcs you'll know about formation flying it's not the easiest thing in the world to do lots of little adjustments the last thing you want to do for this poor guy in front is basically become a anchor and just drag him out the sky so we're going to do our absolute best here again a bit of practice too far left Bring it back across here we go bit of trim trims also your massive massive friend in flying gliders now the thing about flying gliders is um you could spend 20 minutes to circle in one area to get that lift some people find it a bit boring some people live on it um oh, we're coming left again a little bit okay there's the wing wave see that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here pull this this thing here He'll break off left or right. Normally they do, but I always tend to just come left. And you want to pull away from the toe. 
Uh, what happens IRL? You'll predetermine which one does which. Um, when I flew, the toe always broke right and the glider broke left, so there was almost no chance of hitting each other. Uh, and you stop after a 90 degree turn. So you're both basically at this point flying completely opposite directions. So as you can see, we're airborne. We are now under our own, I say power, but uh, lift. Now what I'm going to do is going to turn the tone back on now. <clears throat> right, here we go. And as you can hear, we're going up. And you listen for that really high pitched tone, really high pitched tone. So right now we are losing lift. We are heading into winds well, a little bit actually, a bit more right. Now, as you can see, I'm gently moving this. Uh, but in all honesty, I mean, if I just go nose down, we've got the height, more than comfortable height. Let's get the speed way up here. There's 90 knots, 100 knots, just past now. And we're going to go full back on stick. Full back on stick. And it, it can it can really do it. Now what you can do with that speed, you can bleed off that speed for height. All the way back to 60, 70 knots. There's 70, starting those down now. There we go. So you lost a bit of height in having the fun, so to speak. Um, but you know, the excess speed that you've got left over, you can burn that uh, or exchange that for a little bit of height. But this is the fundamentals of it. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to circle this area. Speed's dropping. That's fine. So I'm going to turn around here. Rudder as well. Rudder is very important. So we actually have a little lift there. Nothing crazy. But we're going up. And this is the sort of angle of attack you kind of want. You could be a bit more aggressive. But do you see what I mean when I said earlier? It's not just a gentle turn. Speeds above 60 knots. This is um, quite a bit of rudder turn here. Back on stick. If I'm going a bit too fast. Apply more input. Lead off the speed. And we're climbing. You can see we're climbing. Down here, our altitude's going up. We've got positive tones. It will drop. Occasionally, like so. And if it starts dropping, we may have been at that pocket. Okay, we're at that pocket. We've gone beyond that pocket. Okay, so now let's just fly around a bit. Um, now, you can use external applications. Um, if you literally Google um, Glider Thermal uh, Finder, there's a great map uh, that shows you where there are some thermals around the world. There's a big lift. So we can potentially stay in this lift. Like so. Aggressive turn. A bit too slow there. Let's see if we can find it again. Keep that nose above the horizon. It's coming back slowly, maybe. I was a bit slow in there. But another great thing, oh, there it is. Um, but I'm just going to fly level here. So I've got the aircraft trimmed very nicely. And another great thing as well is ridge soaring. Ridge soaring basically means you're flying along um, cliff edges or anything. But the thing about ridge soaring you've got to be super careful with is the downdraft, because that will push you literally. It would be like you've just. Uh, the, the, the gravity of the planet is just 10 times itself on you and you will fall out the sky um, but ridge soaring and I'm not going to show you that today but ridge soaring could be a lot of fun uh, so just think of it as the way as the wind comes across up the ridge so the best place to be obviously is on top of the ridge because uh, all that that wind and hot air potentially if where you are is just pushing you higher and higher and higher uh, well, going up the, uh, the ridge and you're just at the, the peak of it and it keeps you at a good level uh, and it's it could be super fun. On stream once we went ridge soaring, <clears throat> and um, 
Uh, it took about 35 minutes, uh, but we gained enough altitude to just from ridge soaring all the way up to about 14,000 feet to get over the ridges in um, New Zealand. And it was absolutely fantastic. Super, super good fun. Now, <clears throat> today's a good day. We've got thermals. We've got the wind. Um, we could go quite far. Now, if the weather was a bit worse and there wasn't so much wind or so much thermals on a hot day, um, we wouldn't go far from East Mids. Uh, we would stay quite close to our home base, uh, which is just below us. But it's a good day, so we could go quite far. So you could plan a route. You know the weather's going to be fine. Or if you so fly, for example, uh, take off from East Mids, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to head over to uh, Leeds, for example. Or if it's a really, really good day, or again with the preset, you could go as far as uh, Blackpool or further up to Scotland. It depends how much time you have, really. Uh, just keep in mind with gliders, like I said, you could spend 20 minutes circling one spot uh, for, the, for the thermals to keep you up. Now, in Microsoft Flight Sim, you can turn on the thermal projector. Here we go. Is it going to show me? There we go. You, so you can see... Um, okay. So you can see the pockets. There's like not a lot here, but here's those thermals. You can see them. You can see how, how it works. So just to get going, you can maybe turn these on. So give me one second. I'm trying to fly in a bit awkward here. So we can come right because we know there's some just to our right here. And watch the difference in a second. So you could, you could very comfortably just have these turned on until you get, just to get the hang of the thing. Um, but you can see how a minute ago we had a good thermal, then it died. Because we probably just missed it. We were probably, we came into it like here and then just got in the outskirts of it and it just wasn't good enough. I am nose down in here just to get here a bit quicker. But you can hear the tone. There's a drop, there's a drop, there's a drop. And as we get closer to this, turn this uh, this feature on um, while flying by uh, some cliffs or something. Oh, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So they are a bit lower than what we are, but we should still get them. There they go. See that? Just so I say, do you hear that even? So we've got some high ones further out here, which I won't go to because I do want to show you how to land this because it's not your normal landing style. But you can very easily see uh, with this feature turned on, like, okay, what, why, why am I not getting, I had a really good lift and now it's gone. It's how it works, uh, quite literally how it works. And we can see if we fly directly into, uh, into here, uh, we'll get absolutely sent to the stratosphere so to speak but it gives you an idea um it's a great way to learn and you should start hearing us getting sent up any second we're like on the skirt of it so you can see it it looks like we're in it not really not quite but here it comes there it is see that and then you could circle that i'm not doing a very good job here i'm gonna come left actually more than just above 60 knots. Last turn. A bit more on a harsher turn. Too much rudder there. There we go. It is very windy here today, Jesus. Speed's come up nicely as well. But you get the idea. I mean, you could theoretically, if the if the weather permitted it, you could do those sort of turns for quite a while. It could last a couple of minutes. It could quite literally last 40 minutes. It depends totally on the weather. But we've gained some serious height. There's Donington. So we're going to be landing 09. Now what we do, so land in the glider. Um, uh, like I said, they're, they're, they are very much designed to keep you in the air. So if I start nose down, I'm just going to bring too much speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the speed brake, which is that there, and you can hear it. 
these things are like barn doors. If I bring this all the way out, they are disgustingly effect uh, effective. Now watch my speed. So if I get, if I nose down to about 90 knots, there we go. Full, full speed break out. Look how quick my speed just absolutely depletes. So I'm going to go about half speed break here. Airport's off to our right. Um, because there's no other traffic. I'm not on VATSIM. I'm not on any servers. It's just us. So I'm just going to circle at the end here. I'm not going to go um, any downward or anything along those lines. I'm just going to circle this. In fact, we're going to go full speed brake. Get that nose down. And you can hear that tone absolutely stop. So we're, we're dropping quite, quite a rate right now. Full speed brake out, and we're doing a hundred knots, and we are almost pretty much nose down at this point. Now, if I bring the speed brake in, this watch this watch the speed, and listen to the uh, the varimeter. Speed brake in, speed coming up. I'm I not touched the stick at all, and this is what I'm saying. These aircraft are designed to get you and keep you in the air. So I did not touch the stick there at all, and it just it just goes up. Yes, okay, granted, any plane does that. You add speed, and it'll go up, but nothing compared to a glider. These things are just insane. You you sometimes will find that you depend on whether you have to push the stick forward just to get her down. So to land the glider, we're going to go gear out. Here comes the gear. Listen how peaceful that is. This is how peaceful that is. Right, so <clears throat> gears out. Now, landing the glider, it's a lot of trim. And you use the speed brake to control your speed. So we're about 70 knots right now. We're looking really good. Speed brake's half. And when you land, now with most aircraft, you flare. Do not flare on a glider. You land level, flat. You literally land as if you were flying a perfectly trimmed out aircraft or a um, or something that's on autopilot. You you fly just level. So speed brake still half. Coming over Donington. There's a race going on down there. We've got a bit of crosswind, so we're going to counter that. Looking really good. 72 knots it is disgustingly windy today okay speed brake coming in don't want to lose too much speed don't want to land before the wrong way and of course these are more than capable of landing on grass strips as well so speed brake come back out don't want any more lift we're going down listen for those tones I'm eyes out glancing at the speed gauge every now and then and um, you can hear the speed brake coming constantly in motion. And I'm using that to control my speed. There's 60 speed brake fully in. There's a lift. Use a speed brake. Counter that. And just as we're about to touch down, speed brake all the way out. Level, level, level. There we go. Rudder to turn. Keep it nice and straight. Use the stick to keep the wings level. Apply brakes. And then come to a stop. Oh, bit too much on the brake there. My bad. And the wing will come down. Speed brakes all the way in. And that's it. I mean, it, it like I said, it comes with practice. It's insanely rewarding. When you get this, ignore the dog, by the way. Um, it is insanely, insanely rewarding. When you um, take off in a glider and you find a good lift and you completely extortion, uh, extortion, uh, completely um, uh, use that thermal, the lift, uh, to as much as it's got, and you've just gained 2,000 feet from that one lift and off you go. And it's all about, and it will seriously teach you about managing um, 
your, your glide ratio, basically, which you can translate to any other aircraft. Uh, if you, for example, have an engine issue or something um, and you've lost power, you can really translate that to those aircraft. Obviously, it's a sim, so it's slightly different depending on how each aircraft's made, but it's, uh, it's, it's so rewarding. It's peaceful. And like I said, if you've got virtual reality, VR, stick it on, go up somewhere breathtaking and or your, your favorite area where you may live, for example, um, and just enjoy it. It is peaceful, it's relaxing. Um, yes, you've got an element of, uh-oh, I can't seem to get lift, but that's why you do pre-prep with a bit of weather or you so fly uh, to almost guarantee a good day for gliding. Um, fly around your local area, have fun with friends if you get the discus mod. Uh, you can have you and your friends uh, tow each other up, for example, or all in gliders and just go for uh, a really amazing flight around somewhere in the world. Uh, like I said, we do stream this uh, occasionally uh, on my Twitch channel or YouTube channel, actually, sometimes. Uh, so if you want to tag along and join that, you're welcome to. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I don't have my full gliders license. I never got to my solo due to health. Uh, it has been quite a few years since I flew one but I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you've learned a little bit extra from it uh, and built from there but no guys thank you so much if you have any questions please do drop a comment below and I'll be happy to answer the best I can and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day whatever you may be doing and I hope you enjoy sailplanes as much as I do take care bye bye